G'day, how you doing? Ianapolis here, you're acrylic guru, doing a live painting this evening. It's a Sunday night here and I've got some time to do a quick painting. And for this, you're gonna need a, make yourself a moon traceable or a moon template cut out. This is just a simple A4 paper and I've got a Milo tin and scalpel around it. Or to make it even sturdy, I've put it through a laminator and then cut it out and it makes like a beautiful template. So that's gonna be used later on. Um, I think we'll do a dark sky, so this is my craft paint, all right? So I'll get some of that out of there, enough to paint the, the sky area. And I might put a little bit of, where is it, retarda. I'll bring you over closer in a minute, but I've just got you there so you can see what I'm doing, and you can also see me. All right, so I'll just get this onto our canvas. I'm gonna paint the whole canvas just with that craft paint, poster paint, white soft body paint. It's not gesso. A lot of people say, do you gesso your board or why don't you? I don't know whether it is gessoed or not. I don't care whether it's gessoed or not, but if I'm gonna paint the way I paint, I always put the craft paint on there like that with the retarder so I can get this blended surface happening, okay? Phalo blue and do a sky. I want a night sky. So I'll get this on there. Now, I hope this is gonna work because I am honestly just do it, pulling this out of my head. Let's say about there's about there's the ground level, the horizon line, or whatever you want to call it, okay? Now this white paint underneath is gonna have this lighten up, so I'll get it left and right, left and right, left and right, look at that. All the way up to the top. Now this is deoxine purple, so I'm gonna get some of that on my two inch synthetic putter on a brush. It's a bloody good brush to buy from the hardware, something cheap and simple. You can use these brushes as well. They're from the art shop to paint around onto your canvas. But I find this one, don't muck around, gets it on there really well. Now I'm gonna make the top of this quite dark. This goes good with the um, phalo blue. And I'll just bring it down to, I'm pulling it down, pull it down with crisscross strokes. I'm pulling it down and then I'll, Straighten the strokes up with some deoxine there. So if anything, with the atmosphere of the sky, our darks here and the lighter bits still on the horizon because the sun's dipped way down there, but if anything, it's brightening that area up. And I might just get a bit more and see if I can put something here. Then I want to grab some white. Okay, so come down here. You can just look at me doing stuff, I suppose. I'll get a bit of, um, I love this Atelier paint. I'll get a bit of titanium white. There we go. Now, I'm gonna wipe that brush again. Um, oh no, actually, I'll wash it because I've got a grate down the bottom of this container here to massage all the paint off the bristles. And of course I've got my beater bucket. There we go. Beautiful, ready to rock and roll. So we'll pick up some white. The moon's gonna be center off. So this will be somewhat of the glare. So I've loaded the brush up, get it across the middle there, push it on. I'm pushing it, see the paint how it's, there's bugger all on the tip, but it's all here. So depending my tilt on the brush is how much I'm putting onto the canvas. I'm tilting it more, more comes off. And then I, now I'm gonna come up, pulling that band so it's not such a line, a deliberate line that looks like it was made from a factory. Here we go. We've got a glare in the middle. Uh, I've got a toothbrush, where are we? And we want some paint. We want some craft paint. I find craft paint the best. For this I was using the titanium white and mixing it with water but it was getting a bit too messy and I found if you have just the tips loaded it'll flick, it'll spit 
with a lot more control. So watch this. I'm gonna just, because I used to have the whole thing bombed full of paint, it was so thick, and because it's so thick, the hairs can't get the paint off, but when it's just on the edge, they got spring and tail in them, and they can flick your stars, or whatever you want, where you want to go. So watch this, on the tip. And I just wanna do the stars in the um, top area there, okay? Uh, so watch this. Boom. Well, we don't want any long ones. I'll pick up some more. I better. I forgot to put a just a little bit of water with it. Okay, now let's go for it. Get a bit more there. Beautiful, and probably around here a bit. Just maybe there, like that. That'll do it. Plenty of stars. And if you want to be clever. You can always put a concentrated band. The moon's going to be there, so let's say if we had a concentrated band coming right behind the moon as the the dense bit we have in the Milky Way. About there like that. I like to do that. That'll do. We need our template. So this template's going to go roughly about there. Now I'm hoping, I'll put it there excuse me, so it can rest. Now, I want it off-centre, but I want it to cover that so-called Milky Way a bit. There we go. So I'll put that on there like that. And I've only got um, this really high-tacking tape, and I don't want to stick that on there and peel my paint off, so maybe you, people know of it, maybe some people don't. You can just dab it onto your material like that and it lessens the tack of the tape, okay? And just gently get that on there, just so it's not gonna move. Beautiful. I'll get you back over here. Now I've got a, a household sponge with fine pores. You can get some big pores ones. I've got one in my cupboard there. Um, but I, I like using this one because I get to have two ends, okay? and I want to make my moon. Now, I normally do a moon in stages, in layers, so I'll do the dark layer first so I know where I'm going, and I'll start brightening it up gradually, okay? I don't want to start bright and start darkening it up. That's just the way I like to do it. I've, I've got phalo blue on the um, palette there. I'll keep that wet. Glass palettes are great. It's so easy to clean. I've been using this glass palette for years. Now, this is cerulean blue, <sighs> and we have, I'll put a bit of water with that as well. You can see the difference between the, the phalo blue. Um, so I want to grab some of that with some dioxine. Where am I? I've got the camera down there? Yeah, let's get the camera down there. Okay, now I'm pulling it to the side, so I'm opening up a window and I can see what I'm mixing. I make a damn big mess when I do stuff like this, but it's a window, I can see things, what's happening. I'm gonna wet it a bit more, so it'll transfer. No point in mixing all that paint, and you haven't got enough, and you've got to try and do it all again. So I've pretty much got that purpley, bluey. There we go. Now let's just get this moon done. Look at that nice, dark. I did a, uh, a tutorial like this just not long ago. Uh, some sort of full moon, I think I called it, yeah. Um, but I'm gonna be doing moon trees, my series throughout my own designs. I haven't copied them from nowhere. They're all out of my head and hopefully they'll catch on. So we've got that. Now, come down here and pick up just the phalo blue. Same end of the sponge. It's gonna be a different blue though. Hear that tearing? Beautiful. Oh, you probably can't because I've got my microphone plugged in. And I want to create the darker side of the moon. There we go. The, the way I did my full moon, I'm going to pretty much do this. So look at that, beautiful. Now, we've got a deliberate line. Use that sponge, be artistic, and just dance it through and blend it through there with the sponge. Just so it's not such a deliberate line, okay? Very easy. Now we'll turn it around. Oh, before we turn it around, 
we're going to get the we've still got that on there we're going to get the white now so i'll just see it's thick and gluggy it won't transfer very well spray your paint on your palette there and get the lighter color now you want the lighter color still dark and bring it lighter now when you're using a sponge sometimes you get goobly blips see on the edge there when you're conditioning in it with paint just tell yourself that they're not there make sure they're not there so when you're putting it on your painting you don't go and put a goobly gloop all over your painting now I want to create this brighter side so I'm going to start from there and it's going to mix with that darker blue there we go it's getting on there beautiful Okay, that's pretty much it. What I will do is probably, I don't like the way it's got there, so I'm gonna get some of that darker color again. And see if I can dance it back. No, I'm gonna end up stuffing it. I don't wanna stuff it up, there we go. Just get a beautiful transition of those two. Here we go. Get more of your white. Finish that off. Now I'm going to turn the sponge around and use the other end, okay? So back down here. This all look, it might look all a bit, where's it going, how's it going to look? But once you pull that beautiful sharp acetate or laminated paper off it, you've got a nice sharp edge. It's bloody beautiful. Now I'm going to turn the the sponge around, wet that paint a little bit, and then I want to just pull it onto the edge, okay, all around here, just so I can get my real bright, crisp, lighted edge up on that moon. Okay, everything's still wet there, just hold your template. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And practice this on scrap. I used to do this, practice it on cardboard or some sort of hard surface, just getting different coloured paints, even if they were a brownie colour, it doesn't have to be the right colours, just so long as you're getting the things happening. Now, I like to just dab a little bit there we're pretty much, that's pretty much it. And I like to get my finger like I did and probably mm, carefully put some crater-like distortions within that moon. Wipe your finger as you go. And then you just easily sit that down with some more white. Okay, you've done that. Then grab the white again and just lightly come back over some of that easily, just just like that. And that should give you a bloody good moon, I reckon. Let's have a look. There we go. We've got a nice sharp moon in the sky, all right? And you want it to look like it's floating in air and this stuff behind is actually behind it. That's what you want to do, and you can do that if you follow what I've just done. Turquoisey colour. So that's what this one's pretty much going to be. Okay. So I'm going to get some turquoise now, which is down here. Is that turquoise? Yep. Now I've put some... Now that palette, not the palette, the canvas is dry this is probably going to go on not the way i want let me just see yeah look at that that's disgusting so i'm going to pick up the rest of this flow white with the retarder get me waterline roughly where i want it which is say about here because we need some light reflecting into the water okay so i'll grab that toothbrush again and we want to concentrate just where the moon is. Oh my. Look at that. So you get these on there. 
Look at that, beautiful. Right where the moon is. Okay, like the moon. The light of the moon. There we go. Now, there's two things you can do here. Leave it like that, or because I've got a goobly gloop, I'm gonna get this big brush and just pull it like that. Nice and carefully though, so it's not a big white smear. That'll do, that will do it. Okay, you can use whatever color you want here. I'm gonna use um, black and I've got some dioxine purple there to mix it up as well. So it's not just neat black. So we'll get that. You just put any foreground now. So just remember, back up here to the painting, if you're doing a rendition of this, do your moon the best as you can your moon. Do your night starry sky the best you can your starry sky. Do your water the way you do it. And now do your little bit of grassy area here the way you would do yours. You don't have to try and get it exactly like the tutorial's showing you. If you can't, you can always mix it up, make it your own. Now I'm going to get some of this, I'll wet it so I get a good transfer happening. It's a bit purpley, I want it a bit blacker. And I'm going to go about that high, so I want to get the height of it roughly first in there and while I dried it I don't want it mudding up with this black purpley color that I've mixed and it's still doing it a bit. Being an interactive paint it can open it up when it gets wet but you do this nice and hairy however you like okay. And you know how you normally paint a tree then you've got to put a highlight on it well, I'm going to show you a one stroke method where we can do the tree in one stroke with one color of paint and it's already got the highlight there. Okay, that's what I want to make these moon trees all about. Now you just do this as much as you want until your cows come home, all right? So I'm loading up each side of my brush. Now is that dry? Dry enough. Now these trees, I want to do like a lamppost. Where are we? Can you see the bottom there? Yep, there we go. I'll get over here a bit more. See, when I'm editing, you don't get all this frustration. Now from the bottom, if I want to come up, we're about that close. Now see that half line? That's it. Get another, the bottom bit a little bit darker. And maybe a branch coming off there. Okay. Come right off the painting there. There we go. Now, I, I want, I'd like to just leave it like that. I'm going to grab a um, liner brush, I don't know what number it is, just a liner brush. I'm getting the paint here that I used for that, a little bit inky. Now I want to come off it and twist all these sharp bits of business in there into the moon. Make sure your brush is quite damp for this so I don't want the line half there and half not you've got to keep them going and the good thing with these you need some of them to cross over each other just so they don't look flat they've got dimension with them come within that branch there come out a bit over here twist this brush as you go I'm gonna look at my Screen in a minute just to see what 39 minutes been going for not too bad yeah, 
How are we going? I'll we'll put my autograph down here. Hey, and don't forget, any of my paintings you want to purchase, click on the links below and see what's available, and they're all done through PayPal. You can own one of my paintings. They're coming quite popular, and people are very happy with them. And you get to see them on YouTube being created as well, which is a good thing within itself. And when I'm dead and gone and your grandkids have got them, they're worth big bucks. So it's an investment. How's that, eh? There we go. Oh, we can even um, whack a frame on it just to see how this sort of fantasy painting looks. And then I'll pull back and... So let's go there. It's not too shabby in a frame, is it? You know, you've got our moon, our, our moon tree. Whether it can be on water or land or like a, a, a moon surface, this can even be a planetary surface. But we've got our moon tree there, okay? And I... So I hope you enjoyed this simple little exercise um moon and i hope you liked what i've done for you today and if you do like what i'm doing you make sure you tell your friends and families but if you don't like what i'm doing you tell everybody all right all the best goodbye good luck and bloody good on you eh?